back in the koi house and the eight o'clock feed has just gone off as you can see and I've got a couple of things to um, show you as you can see the air bar the one meter air bar I had it across here on my first video and I've actually moved it to the back wall there so it's from a meter from there to there and um, as you can see it's doing very well now this pond is not particular that deep so if you've got something four five say four five four five six foot and you've got one of those air tubes air bar sorry then you're going to get a really really good uplift and if you have it at the side of the pond what happens there's an uplift of air that creates obviously bubbles the bubbles gain momentum and pull other bubbles and create other bubbles and then that hits the surface the bubbles a lot of them don't actually pop at the surface they actually still they continue to move and i'll show you just about to food don't disturb them too much because they're getting fed every two hours now so um as you can see if i move this over here a bit to there you can see the air bar now it's better you can see it more there so you can see the end start so it's one meter and the bubbles are nice and fine and they're coming up a lot and you can you start to see like a bit of stream of bubbles you see it and then when the bubbles come out the stream lot you follow that there so actually still going there you still still see still see some going up and popping on the surface you can actually see them follow that one look follow follow there pop there look so and that is then that then releases oxygen and that is how you get oxygen oxygenated water i've said it many times i'm sick of hearing my own voice when i say it now so i'm not going to say it again but as you can see that is quite effective and i've got a 95 litre pump running that that stone in there and then two stones on there i've turned this one off now for a bit so i want to try and get as much air into the ponds now it's you know starting to get into summer even though there's no oxygen problems at the minute because it's not that warm we've had a bit of a, a you know flat line of weather guys haven't we pain in the bum so the fish are doing well in there i've messed about with this because i had this one in there you remember with the old spraying but i'll find in the even though you can't see it and that was splashing this way as well there and i've come in today then it's a bit there look so obviously what's happening is you're getting the odd splash and you don't see them a lot but it's surprising how much the odd splash of water um creates green green and wetness so i'm um, put that back pointing straight across the pond Now I've done this, this up, well, I say up and down, it was up and then across. But when I take this off sometimes, I'm finding them again, quite a lot of DOCs trapped in this. So I've put an hole in there, look, and a bit of pie. I did actually have some tube into a bucket and left overnight and it didn't collect anything. So, I don't know, we might at least drag some air into this part, but, um, Let's see if it does it now. Let's see if it drops all the DOCs into the pond. Yeah, it is, look. Can you see them coming out? <laughs> Bloody hell. Yeah, so it's dumped them now, look. So, that must be... Can you see they've all dumped? Yeah, so mm, so I thought if I put that on, you never know. 
because in here there's obviously causing some disturbance and I thought it might actually create some DOCs but anyway it's not look dumped them all in the pond now so I think where it's coming from it's not coming from there it's actually coming from when the water comes through works through hits the media comes out the bottom and it's the bottom and it's obviously creating foam here so um, yeah that, that's annoying but anyway I might have to think that and just put it straight out and down so it doesn't go up anymore it can come straight out the bottom of there after I think about that because every time I do that it annoys me if I can get my hose pipe on and give them a blast and they'll go right so the second portion of this and to end this week's video I had a bit of a play about zero nitrite still on this pond KH of 2 but then on the NT labs there is a hint of nitrite in this so nothing to worry about and that's well in date as well so I've had a play about with the moving bed and I'll show you what I've done can't tell from here looks completely normal but actually inside there is something and I'll tell you what that is now so there's a Facebook group and every time someone mentions KH one chap pipes up every time every single time without fail and this person recommends something to maintain your KH keep it stable so I'm trying it because I don't mind trying it so that pond is KH2 I've just done them that's KH2 now this one I've got some filter sacks and filter bags and I got these off Amazon I've got there's like this mesh for ponds actually for pumps as well if you've got a pump in a pond you can actually put them inside this sack and then put the drawstring up to collect media so fish can't get trapped in them you pump and things like that but anyway that's what so there's that and I've got some smaller ones as well this size so I've got three of those and two of these. So this size, I've filled up two of, oops, two of them with Canterbury Spa. And you get this from builders merchants. This is that stuff that when you can remember in some properties years and years ago or some flats and things like that, the render get it to, and then this they, they spray this on with a little tool and spin a handle and it's got like wire brushes and it flicks it onto the wall and it sticks into the render. It was all the rage years ago. And it's called Canterbury Spa. So this person, like I say, swears by it now I think a lot of us have used KH buffers bicarbonate I use bicarbonate because it's cheap you can get a sack of it and I just put some in every few days and just keep it maintained and this stuff I'm surprised how actually clean it is and obviously it's got made up this stuff of calcium carbonates So, that sack, I think it cost me £11, and it was bloody heavy from a builder's merchants, and it's a good grade, grade B it says, and I'm surprised how clean it was. I thought there'd be loads and loads of dust in it, but there isn't. So I put it straight in the sack, straight in the two sacks, and put them in there at the back edge in the middle so just under there 
this two sacks sitting on top of each, of each other. And I'll let you know what the KH does. So what I'm probably going to have to do, because I go away this week for a few days, so I'm not going to be here to monitor the KH and also but it's that time of year and these are quite these are getting fed 12 times a day not big amounts but little and often it's probably only about 100 grams a day at the moment for these one two three four five it's it? for these eight fish nine fish but what i don't want to do is for the kh because it's only like two at the moment i can maintain that if i'm here by putting in a hand of bicarb in a bucket and putting in here every you know every couple of days i can maintain that too but what i don't want to do because i'm not here that's not going to be done and i don't want the kh to drop to zero and then the biological filter won't have calcium carbonate to continue growing and the beneficial bacteria being healthy and that's when then your filter can crash because that's its life source if you like and without that the filter will crash if the biological bacteria dies off because it hasn't got that source then obviously the ammonia won't be getting chewed up and if the ammonia is not getting chewed up that creates nitrite because that's second in the chain so your nitrite will start going up and then if they start going up that's where then the le levels can become toxic to the koi and then they become unwell stop feeding become lethargic x y and z and if it's prolonged then you can get skin irritations that can lead on to ulcers and all sorts of stuff so that's why it's important to keep the kh in check kh is so important with pond keeping in winter k8 shouldn't be a problem for most people but this time of year spring into summer summer into autumn that spell when the biological bacteria when the water's warmer the, the biological bacteria is growing with the demand so the more food i put in the more the more demand i'm putting on the system so therefore there's more food for the biological bacteria then the biological bacteria can multiply and grow so it grows and grows and grows and then in winter everything tails off water cools down the beneficial bacteria and your filter that starts growing down it doesn't stay there there's a misconception that people think that you pour a bottle of filter bugs in and it says there's 50 million or whatever it says on these bottles and makes these claims of bacteria you put them in and that's it they're there chomping on the food source that's not the case that will only um, maintain and stay depending on the what it can eat so you know so the population will grow and at the peak of what will maintain your pond and if and if there's no more demand it can't grow because there's no food it's just natural isn't it? it just all makes sense if you think about it in that way it's quite logical so on that i will let you know how i go but what i'm to end that what i'm going to do i think i'm probably in the next couple of days i might put some in now i might raise start raising today and tomorrow over the next two three days before i go away raise the kh so it's about four five and then it obviously deplete a little bit for when i get back deplete deplete then hopefully probably be about round about what it is now when i get back as opposed to not be on zero when i get back that in there may well maintain two and if it does i'll be absolutely over the moon if that can maintain the kh and what i mean by maintain keep it at the sem similar sort of level so i'm putting in less bicarbonate changing you know fluctuating things keeping it more stable I'll be happy as Larry, but I'll soon know because for some reason that is more or less in tow with that, which is a bit strange because that has a lot more food going in than that. 
and there's four fish in there so um so yeah interesting stuff so like i say i'm not going to take credit for that if it does work and i'm not going to take credit for it if it fails <laughs> nothing if there's nothing if you don't try things there's actually nothing gained is there so in my eyes there's nothing gained nothing lost now some people might say oh you shouldn't be using that because it might do this and leach stuff into your pond and stuff like that but you can buy products you can use um is it oyster shells you can buy a bucket of them for about 30 quid was it about five kilo for 30 quid i've seen them i've seen them it's absolutely extortionate i know the japanese use a lot of uh, shells oyster shells sacks of them or you know troughs of them of the stuff to keep the kh balanced so and i'm yet to find that thing that does it but this person swears by it they state every time that it maintains their kh okay so i've got a low kh of around two three so surely that should be enough to maintain it it might not maintain seven if you want seven kh but i'm not maintaining that i'm maintaining quite a low kh so we will see what's this space on that note thanks for watching I hope your core you're doing okay I hope your pond's doing okay i hope this sun comes back because it seems like it's flatlined to me does it you flatline or what wow we're getting a bit of rain now as well a bit of drizzle and stuff but the temperatures are really it's really crap outdoor ponding my outdoor pond has dropped now to 17 degrees. These indoor ponds, as you know, have been 24 degrees now, all May and all June. So for two months now already, they've been 24 degrees. Consistent. The air source heat pump mini one at the back there has been kicking in. It kicked in today actually. Now it's gone a bit flat line. That kicked in today, this morning. So ever so often it kicks in just to bump the temperature back up. But uh, that pond out there, you've got absolutely no chance of growing anything. This outdoor pond in the UK is no good growing pond. You, you know, you grow, you've got to get the water to 24, 22, 24 degrees. Get some really top quality growth food going like Saki Akari growth. Water quality on point filters on point so you can get the food going in because if you're having nitrite problems you can't feed so it's catch 22 so you've got to have enough biological media and like I say I'm testing this this year so I don't know whether it's going to be enough but I anticipate I should be able to go up to 300 grams of food which is going to take some doing to be honest with you because they're not even consuming I'll show you now um, then because the fish are not that big look that sake sorry the sakai tancho sanki is only around 23 centimeters so um yeah that's not going to take much food a day and then these are about 45 centimeters so they don't need a lot of food so anyway there we go i haven't told you what it is have i Canterbury Spa you, Have you heard of this? Have you used it? Did it work for you? Did it not work for you? Thanks for support. Please hit the like button. If you're not subscribed already, please hit the subscribe bell. Hit the notification bell. And thanks for the support. See you on the next one.